It's good to hear you greeting each other in joy and cheer. That was nice to hear your greetings. We offer a warm welcome to all who gather here for worship today. We welcome those who gather with us on the digital platform. May the Holy Spirit guide us and renew us so that we may feed others as we have been fed by Christ. Our prayers inclu include those in the prayer list, uh, concern list, praying also for Alan Peterson under upcoming surgery in August. Nancy Arnold is home and stable at this time. Uh, Harvey Demi is undergoing some treatment at this time. Uh, Grace still uh, had a fall here and um, she's doing well. I'll keep her in our prayers also. So they will be in the prayers today. There, there's no children's church in the month of August, but we'll begin that again September 11th. The blessing of the school backpacks will be on August 18th. I know it's a little early, you know, but not really. So August 18th. And then our prayers and the comfort of our Christian faith are with Gisela Shep, Shepler, who passed away this week and we keep her in our prayers. I'll ask you to stand as you are able for the confession and forgiveness, which we have slightly changed this week. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever, amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another, and we join in a moment of silence to prepare for the words of our confession. Glorious God and gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. By grace we have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen.
love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. God, you have placed within the hearts of all your children a longing for your word and a hunger for your truth. Grant that we may know your Son to be the true bread of heaven and share this bread with all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. See, thank you, David, for the cure. Good job. Good morning. Good morning. Today's first lesson is taken from 2 Kings chapter 4. A man came from Baal Shalisha, bringing food from the first fruits to Elisha, the man of God, 20 loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elijah said, give it to the people and let them eat. But his servant said, how can I set this before a hundred people? So he repeated, give it to the people and let them eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and have some left. He set it before them, they ate and had some left, according to the word of the Lord. We will read Psalm 145 responsibly by verse. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. 
They make known the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power. That the peoples may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. The Lord is faithful in all his words and merciful in all his deeds. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving in all his works. The second lesson today is from Ephesians chapter 3. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his Spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Here ends the readings. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated so also with the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this indeed is the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because of a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, it is I. Do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. This is the gospel of the Lord. 
praise to you. Praise to you, This time the children's sermon. Okay. I don't think I need this. Good morning. Good to see you. How's everybody's summer going? It's going well? But you still have a few more weeks, right? That's good, that's good. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words that are spoken and how we listen guide us to give thanks for your blessings upon us. In Jesus' name, amen. So in the lesson today, there's a few things to point out. There are 5,000 people, and they're hungry, and there's no place to go buy food. But in the crowd, there is a boy with five barley loaves, two fish. When I read that, I'm thinking one way to understand a Bible passage is to put yourself into it. And if we put ourselves into it, at least you, you would be the boy or the young girl. Maybe there was a girl there too, I don't know. Um, but we, we would put you in as the children or the one who had the fish. And when you think about that, let's say you are the child there and you have these loaves and fish, and I would wonder, where did you get the fish and loaves? And then I, that's right, who knows? And then I would say, are your mom and dad with you? We don't know that. I wonder if they're looking for him in that crowd of 5,000. I bet they're worried. I wonder if they're saying, where is he with our loaves and fish that we want? All of that's going on, at least in my mind, and the boy or the child gives freely the loaves and the, and the fish to Jesus, and he feeds the multitude, and there is enough that all are satisfied, and they gather 12 baskets full. This is a story of, of a miracle, of a breaking in of the kingdom of God that Jesus does in healing miracles and feeding miracles, and in, in this healing miracle, he's giving us an example of Holy Communion, where Jesus comes and feeds us his body and blood, and there is enough, and we are strengthened and renewed. So today for you, I have some pa already packed and um, homemade sugar cookies in there, and they're in the shape of a fish. They can't swim unless you have milk. They do well in milk, because <laughs> they're sugar cookies. Boy, now I'm hungry. Anyway, so come up or Maybe, Nina, you can help pass these out. And I'd say take, take one plate, two fish. Maybe, I hope you enjoy one of them, and then you could share the other with someone. Um, that would be good. And do you think I should give them four? Yeah, yeah why don't we take four? Because there's, there's a lot of fish. They're going to be lonely. You take four. And then we have, uh, and I guess if you're hungry back there, sure. <laughs> There's time before I start. So they get, everybody's getting four. And I'll bring that. Is that right? Did, yeah, that's, well, four fish, two plates. <laughs> okay, thank you. The blessing of Almighty God be with you now and always. Amen. Nina, you have four? Is that four? Yeah, that's it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. that doesn't uh, throw the plans off for children's church. Okay. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words that are spoken and how we listen be guided by the Holy Gospel and true to the Holy Word of Jesus, that we may be fed by Christ so that we may feed others. In Jesus' name, amen. So what is enough? Enough means a sufficient number or amount. Not enough would be a scarcity. More than enough means an abundance. So what do we have? Do we have a scarcity 
Do we have an abundance? The servant in 2 Kings 4 said of those 20 barley loaves and fresh ears of grain, how can I set this before a hundred people? The underlying belief is that he doesn't have enough. In John 6, when the large crowd is coming to Jesus and Jesus asks, where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? Philip answers, six months wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. Andrew finds that that child with five barley loaves and two fish and asks, but what are they among so many people? With no criticism of Philip or Andrew, the disciples of Jesus, the underlying fear is that they won't have enough to feed everybody. In one sense, you could think that is an an idea of hospitality, true, we want to have enough, but in this case it really is a question of abundance or not having enough and how we feel about that. Because in Ephesians there is the other answer to do we have enough. The answer is a resounding yes when we read, now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. The answer is we have an abundance. The attitude of scarcity and the theology of abundance are woven through 2 Kings and also John 6. The boy sharing his five barley loaves and two fish and the man bringing food for the first fruits of 20 barley loaves and fresh ears of grain, they are both sharing a theology of abundance. They are bringing it to share. In 1 Kings, however, it can change quickly. The servant says, how can I set this before a hundred people? And in John, the question is, what are two fish and five barley loaves among so many people? And so we go from abundance to scarcity again. The theology of abundance is seen in 2 Kings when Elisha says to the man who brings those 20 barley loaves and fresh ears of corn, Elisha says, give it to the people and let them eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and have some left. He said it before them, they had some left according to the word of of God. Abundance in the gospel lesson is really very clear. Jesus took the loaves and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. Same with the fish. As much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, the disciples gathered 12 baskets of crumbs. Some words stand out. That first word that stands out to me is satisfied. When they were satisfied, they gathered up the leftovers. Satisfied means having enough. Content, complete, not necessarily full, but satisfied. It isn't that really the goal of our meals to be satisfied, not necessarily full or overly full. There is a difference between needing enough and wanting more. When you eat for satisfaction, there are fragments gathered and fragments can fill other plates and baskets. So eating for satisfaction leads to fragments and more for others. All four of these gospel lessons all four of the gospels include the feeding of the 5,000 And Matthew and Mark add a similar story of the feeding of 4,000. In all the stories, there is an abundance left over. So it's an important theme. And there are really three miracles in John 6. The first miracle is that in the hands of Jesus, such a small amount of food can feed so many people. The invitation is John is to take as much as they desire. That leads to the second miracle. 
And it's those people in the crowds who choose in the presence of Jesus sharing over hoarding and to be satisfied rather than overly full. And that means some was left over. Jesus says, take what you want. Instead of hoarding, they are satisfied with what they need. There's a third miracle, of course, and that's the, the child, his, gener- his or her generosity, willingness to share what the person had, which was really everything he had. He shared everything he had and turned it to Jesus. Three miracles. In the face of hungry and starving people in God's garden, both far and in our neighborhoods, we might think, what can we do? Feeling helpless like Philip and Andrew. And yet like Andrew, Philip, and mostly by, like Jesus, we can channel those feelings to resilience and do what the boy does in John, contribute our little bit and trust in what God can do, just as we read in Ephesians. When we focus on being satisfied rather than being full, and then we have fragments that we can share. When we work for food justice, which includes communities exercising their right to grow, sell, and eat healthy food, healthy food that is fresh, nourished, affordable, is a way to care both for the land, for workers and animals. And so we can work for that sense of of local farming and growth of family gardens, and you're doing that. But before I talk about that, you have the shepherd's closet. The third Saturday of each month is your free clothing and food ministry outreach and care for people. As many of you have seen and told, you are bringing joy and hope to many people. On July 20th, you shared food and clothing, and after that, you shared balloons from Vacation Bible School with the children who were here that day, and you saw their excitement, their joy, and their thanksgiving. You have a feeding and clothing ministry here, following in the footsteps of John chapter 6. Thank you. Through the shepherd's closet, you take your abundance and share with those facing need and not having enough. In many ways, the 12 Saturdays of the shepherd's closet are an embodiment of the miracle in John 6, 1 to 21. Don't think of it of anything less than a miracle reflected in John 6. And for those you serve, for those who come, it is a miracle to them. And they give great thanks. Also, the gardeners are bringing in produce, and you make a donation, and then that donation goes to world hunger. So you are involved deeply in this feeding ministry that Jesus calls us to. We all support the Olympic Games, the ideals of fair competition, the athletes of the world coming together to compete and do their best. It's important that they are together and and ties are made and the world comes together. All in all, it's a very good time. I mean, a good time for building bridges instead of barriers. And as these Olympic Games go on, we also know there is a global food crisis with people hungry and, and in some places starving. The hunger crisis in our garden is caused in part by conflicts and war, by climate extremes and weather-related disasters, and certainly by economic inequality. The integrated food security phase classification of the UN, called IPC, reports that nearly all of Gaza's population of about 1.1 million are experiencing catastrophic food insecurity and half a million facing starvation. In addition, there is hunger and starvation in the Ukraine, 
in the Congo and Afghanistan and Syria, Niger, Chad, Sudan, Ethiopia, and Haiti. I'm sharing this because we cannot look away. We cannot pretend that this is somewhere else. We cannot close our eyes. Because we take 1 Corinthians 12, 26 seriously. We take it seriously that when one suffers anywhere, we all suffer everywhere. And as if it isn't getting more ramped up, there was, as you know, an attack in the Golan Heights and 12 people, young people and children were killed and then a response already. The United Nations World Food Program delivers life-saving food to children and families in need throughout the world. This is good news. Lutheran World Relief, Bread for the World, the Heifer International, the Hunger Project, and many others which you know about. And what you're doing right here help to feed hungry people. So in light of this lesson, we should give some thanksgiving that much is being done and much more can and needs to be done. May we feed the hungry as we have been fed by Christ. May we carry the words of the Kyrie eleison that David sang. May we carry the words of that Kyrie in our hearts. That one phrase, that we may live out your impassioned response. God's impassioned response to the hungry and the poor, that we may live out truth, justice, and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. As we carry that Kyrie in our hearts, we are carrying in our hearts all who are suffering and hungry, facing violence, and even death. When they ache and suffer, we ache and suffer also. Amen. The blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with each of you. Amen.
affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, <clears throat> sees from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. One in communion of saints and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we join our voices in prayer. God of generations, you work in us far more than we can ask or imagine. Bless the church you have called into being across time and space. Fill us with the power of the Spirit for loving service. In your mercy, hear our prayer. God of field and forest, streams and seas, you are the fullness of all things. As grains of wheat grow upon the earth and fish swim in the waters, sustain your creation. Protect harvests and give every person food in due season. We pray for all who are hungry or starving that they may be fed. In your mercy, hear our prayer. God beyond borders, you rule all in all. Bless the work of humanitarians, peacekeepers. Shield those who live, work, and serve in harm's way. And bring an end to war and conflict in all places that we have named just now in this sermon. In your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing, you open wide your hands and satisfy the desire of every living thing. We remember any who are sick or suffering for their families, granting them strength. We pray in particular for Harvey Demi and Grace Still, for Alan Peterson and Nancy Arnold, and those listed on the key concerns prayer, and for those that we name aloud in or in our hearts at this moment of prayer. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all participating in the Olympic Games in Paris. Keep everyone in safety and may all compete to the fullness of their ability. And may a sense of respect and care for each other grow fully. In your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all, your love in Christ surpasses all knowledge. We give thanks for the departed who have come to know the fullness of your grace. Join our voices with them. We pray for the Shepler family. Comfort them with the assurance of the resurrection. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, holy and merciful, into your outstretched arms we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in the one who shows us the way, the life, and the truth. Jesus, our Savior and Lord, amen. amen. The peace of Christ be with you always, and also with you.
Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and good that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. So with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. maker, redeemer, and healer, in the harmonious world of your creation, the plants and animals, the seas and stars were whole and well in your praise. When sin had scarred the world, you sent your Son to heal our ills and to form us again into one. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. Send your spirit upon this meal. As grains scattered on the hillside become one bread, so let your church be gathered from the ends of the earth, that all may be fed with the bread of life, your Son, our Savior. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy creation both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for everyone. Come and be satisfied. Amen. Thank you. 
understand. The body of our Lord Jesus and his precious blood strengthen and keep you in true faith to everlasting life. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world. In your name we pray, amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you and with you forever. Amen. Oh, 